Huntsman, Head of Engineering for RM Stater, and this is Q&A. We have a good question uh, today. It is, how does an AC regulator work? So an AC regulator is very different from a regulator rectifier in that it does not have a rectifier. So if you can watch some of our other videos to learn about that, but a rectifier is preparing stator current for a battery charging situation. Um, AC regulation means that there is no battery and we need a regulator on an AC coil from the stator to protect a lighting circuit typically. So we need that because as the motor spins faster and faster, the voltage coming out of the coil will be higher and higher and it will very easily, if it's unchecked or unregulated, blow up your headlight bulb or taillight bulb or whatever's connected to that circuit. This is commonly seen on like older dirt bikes, even some modern, smaller dirt bikes, smaller CC ATVs, um, dual sport bikes, stuff like that. So uh, it's an important part. Um, and snowmobiles, I don't know if I mentioned that, use tons on snowmobiles, uh, especially older ones. So it's important. Now, they typically look like just a small little silver box with two wires coming out of it. So nothing special. Um, now, how they work, they're very simple. They have a component inside called a Zener diode. And the Zener diode is typically used as for as and for voltage regulation because it has a unique feature. Um, below a certain threshold, certain voltage threshold, it won't do anything. And uh, above a certain voltage threshold, it can limit the output voltage. So as the input voltage climbs, the output will stay steady. That's exactly what we want for voltage regulation. So we use that simple device for an AC voltage regulator. And I drew a couple things here to try and illustrate it. So here, just we look at this drawing, this is voltage. And let's say the motor spinning faster and faster, our voltage coming out of the coils increasing, and it's going to keep increasing up here, the faster and faster the motor spins. However, what the AC regulator and that Zener diode inside does is limit the output voltage at a certain point. So we can hold the voltage down and not blow up our headlight bulb. Now, if you really think about it, this chart doesn't totally make sense, but it's kind of a good illustration of uh, seeing that our voltage can increase to a point and then be held steady uh, on the output to the light bulb. However, the input voltage keeps climbing. Okay, so if we see what's, what's how it's wired or how it's connected on the vehicle, we have a coil on the stator, and these are typically a single phase coil, meaning one coil uh, we have connected to both ends. Sometime one side of it is connected to ground or the frame of the vehicle, sometime it's not, either way is fine. So the voltage regulator, it goes in parallel with your light and it's connected, so I show it right here in this box. It's in parallel with your light, which means it's connected on either side of your light. And some of these have two wires, some have one. If it has one wire, it's because the, the metal frame chassis is connected to your frame ground on the vehicle. And so that counts as a wire, basically. If it has two wires, then we're accessing both sides of it via wire instead of the metal uh, casing. So here we have our stator coil. We have our two wires coming out of it. They are going directly to either side of our headlight bulb, but right behind it and in parallel, we put our AC voltage regulator. And you can see the symbol for the Zener diode I drew inside here, which is a little triangle with a line over it indicating a diode and a Zener type has these two little wings or arms on the side of the line. So that is indicating that it's doing its job as voltage is rising coming out of this coil with RPM increase over a certain threshold, this will start to conduct or shunt, and then we are able to limit voltage output to the light. So simple device, does its job, and we have plenty of them available. Thanks for watching. This is a really good question. Uh, it is, can I use a lithium battery regulator with a regular battery, or vice versa, a um, lithium battery with a non-lithium specific voltage regulator? Okay, so a while ago, um, even a couple of years ago, it was pretty critical to use a voltage regulator specific for lithium batteries with a lithium battery. Okay, that was because, in my opinion, most of the older lithium batteries didn't either did not have or did not have very good battery management systems. So that is a internal circuit to the battery to protect it from over voltage or um, various conditions that could damage it. So without that function at all or working very well, it was very critical to not, especially not overcharge a lithium battery. So we built and other competitors have built lithium specific voltage regulators. They do a very good job. Their secret sauce is not really that secret. It is limiting the voltage output. So let's say a typical regulator meant for a lead acid battery would be set at a regulation point of 14.6 volts. A, a lead acid battery, perfectly fine. Even if it hit 15 volts every now and then, not never gonna hurt it. 
Um, a lithium battery could be very picky about that and could be damaged from those kind of voltages. So we would set our regulation point for lithium regulators, lithium battery regulators at about 14.1 volts. So knocking that down half a volt gave you some extra margin or some overhead, even if the voltage spiked a little bit or something, you had plenty of overhead to not damage a lithium battery. Okay. Used to be very important, still probably is important, never a bad idea to use a lithium specific regulator with a lithium battery. And you could always use a lithium specific regulator with a lead acid battery, AGM, any type of lead battery, um, because they're just not picky about voltage. 14.1 volts, 14.6, they're gonna charge either way, they're not gonna complain. So that was never a problem. Okay, now what I've seen with really modern lithium batteries, I'm not a battery expert, but I've played with lots of them and done lots of testing. If I'm ever running a lithium, I use the EarthX brand lithium batteries. I love them. They're local to me here in Colorado and they're really high quality. Um, but they have an excellent battery management system that will protect it. So with, and I think I can almost speak for other brands because I don't, I haven't tested them or, or used them really, but I think most modern ones with a good battery management system are just not going to be picky about it. You could use a regular regulator, as long as it's a good quality one, a regulator, regular regulator, even regulating at 14.6 volts is never going to hurt a modern lithium battery. So I think we're getting away from the time when that was really serious and picky issue. I think as long as you're using good quality battery, good quality regulation and charging components, I don't think it's much of an issue anymore and go for it. All right. Hope that helps. Uh, we had a question asking, um, can I have access to wiring diagrams? So that can mean a lot of different things. Um, I'll answer it a couple different ways. We do have uh, diagrams for many of our stators, voltage regulators, CDIs. They're all part of our internal data sheet documentation because we typically build direct replacement parts. And so they're already color coded and connector keyed and all that kind of stuff to replace your original or to plug in correctly. So we don't typically provide them. Um, I would say if you have questions or problems, contact our customer service because we're always happy to help and we can get you answers or a diagram for a particular one. I don't think it's likely we'll ever post like complete wiring diagrams for vehicles or parts or stuff uh, on our website. Okay, uh, and then kind of in relation to this, we don't provide it, but I'll give you a tip that I use all the time. Um, lots and lots of times I need wiring diagrams for vehicles. So I need the complete diagram showing a whole harness schematic for a motorcycle, ATV, whatever. Um, Google is really powerful for that. There's uh, it's very easy to search whatever you're looking for. Like I have my Honda XR650R sitting over there. So I would search XR650R service manual PDF. Those are typically the keywords I use. More often than not, especially on a little bit older vehicle, you're gonna find a link through Google to a PDF file of a factory service manual that will have wiring diagrams inside of it, not to mention all the test specs for your electronics. Try that first. There's a great website called Manuals Library. I think the website's manualslib.com or .net, but if you search Manuals Library, you'll find it. Um, excellent website, huge repository of service and owner's manuals for tons of vehicles and appliances and all, all sorts of stuff. It's not just power sports, but tons and tons of manuals there. Um, so just do some Google searching. It's not very hard to track down P good PDF file, original service manual and diagrams for just about every vehicle out there. You'll have trouble on brand new stuff or within a couple years old, but older stuff, no problem at all. So good. Hope that helps you.